Voilà, donc ce que je voulais juste peut-être, c'était euh, définir rapidement, mais vous le ferez peut-être encore beaucoup mieux, ce qu'est cette, euh, cette économie de la fonctionnalité. Qu'est-ce que ce type d'économie C'est un peu bizarre pour certains. Euh, moi, je le résumerais en disant que c'est une économie de fonctionnalité dans le fond de la fonction 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 de la You can make use of something without necessarily uh, owning it. This is what it means. And Dominique Bourg is a philosopher of a special kind because uh, you are a professor at the uh, Technology University uh, in Compiègne, not anymore. I'm in Lausanne, Switzerland now. And you've worked for several companies, CDC. No, Société Générale, I've never worked for those people. No. Still, before we come to the nitty-gritty, I'd like to ask you the following. What do you think a philosopher can bring to you, uh, companies? Well, maybe I'm not the right person to answer this. You should own these two companies themselves. Well, I'm more interested in two uh, dematerialization strategies because uh, we have a major problem with energy and material flows and functionality is one way of dematerializing things. And that's because of that I'm interested in it, but it's a hobby. It's not my main occupation. We do understand this concept of economy of functionality, but it is going to change drastically the existing system. Do you think that it would be a drastic switch, or is it going to be a gradual, slow process? I'm not making a proposal for a model which would be a substitute for everything. That would be ridiculous. Of course, there will be a coexistence of the different forms of economy. There is a first constraint, which is that of relying less on material and energy for activities. And uh, you used it quite rightly. There is a substitution of the selling of the use function, and therefore the uh, concept of economy of functionality instead of owning objects. There are two main uh, aspects. There's B2 to be when a company will perform a function within another business. Uh, for instance, Michelin is going to sell a renting of mileage of uh, tires to another company. That's a B2B. B2C is then where a company or a business will directly reach out the final consumer user. And then that's the you know renting of uh, cars and bicycles in uh, some towns. Dijon, uh, in France, a major electric uh, household appliances is going to have 20 different places where you're going to rent some uh, electrical appliances. What is interesting is what is going to happen uh, with the solidarity-based uh, economy that is going to perform uh, all the work in, uh, involved in cleaning all the uh, appliances and uh, the services related to it. And then there's B2B2C that is connecting people with one another, with one uh, a company between a business and a customer. Like, for instance, uh, you want to uh, rent some equipment. It's uh, an individual who may be renting an object from another uh, individual. No. In our region of the world, the uh, crisis is rather uh, difficult. And now we can wonder whether this type of economy um, is not going to change because we're going to produce less goods. And uh, therefore, we're going to put the industries in a more difficult situation. This is why I've made the difference. It's not the same thing whether you're talking about a car that is a, perform, a, a company that is performing a function for another company. And I'm going to use a series of examples to make this 
understood. When Rank Xerox invented a new photocopying system, copying machines were too expensive, they were not affordable. So Rank Xerox decided to sell a service of uh, copying. And that's when it became very interesting for them. And it changed completely the way they designed their copying machine so that uh, up to 80% of the parts had been already reused in another device before a new device was uh, assembled. Michelin could imagine a tire uh, that would have a very little uh, wear and tear rate. That would be very expensive, but Michelin wouldn't be able, therefore, to sell it. Now, let's imagine that uh, Michelin finds uh, buyers who would be crazy enough to buy it. Uh, that would be the end of Michelin. But what can you do in such instances that instead of selling the tire, you may sell the use of the tire and invoice the mileage? And uh, Michelin does it today. And they don't have non uh, wear and tear tires. And there are great benefits and advantages to that. A tire allows for two very important uh, things there is the uh, regrooving, and uh, when uh, there is not enough uh, rubber, you have to add more rubber to it. And for each a type of operation, uh, you're going to have a new tire on the market. And when you do these two operations, the same framework will be, a uh, frame of tire will be used several times. And there will be uh, less wear and tear of the uh, tire. Therefore, with such a system, Michelin will sell less tires with less impact on the environment and make more money. And that's a great interest for B2B. For B2C, it's slightly different because uh, there is this idea of pulling things together. Most of us live in urban areas in uh, small uh, neighborhoods. Now, if you consider the size of our apartments and all the electrical appliances, uh, you're not going to use some, all of them every day. Therefore, it seems to be more interesting to rent these devices for a few hours. Now, the impact is... Uh, not so significant uh, when you compare with the B2C, but with the B2C, but there hasn't been any macroeconomic studies about that. That's purely my intuition. But if you consider the use of work, it's much more intense, uh, labor-intensive uh, for repairs, etc. So if we had part of the economy that would go for B2C, there would be indeed a booming of maintenance activities. What is also important, and that is key, is that this economy of functionality uh, enters the world of what we call circular economy. So you have collaborative economy, economy of functionality, and circular economy. And uh, all these go hand in hand. Linear economy is the one. Uh, we have, you went to buy water somewhere, there was uh, oil used to make the plastic bottle, and then you're going to discard it as a waste, and hopefully it will be recycled. That is a conventional type of economy. There is usually no in, uh, recycling. The waste will go for landfill or incineration, but uh, the, the earth has limited resources. Uh, we cannot consume uh, endlessly, and we know that it is not viable. Therefore, the idea of the circular economy, it is drastically different. That is that for the same service, for the final user, the final consumer, you will be using less energy, less material, design uh, the product right from the beginning. This is what is called eco-design to not to have any toxic uh, ingredients. And finally, after use, there will be a recycle, the objective being of zero waste. Now, this e uh, economy of functionality will fit into this general uh, pattern, in this general system, because the one who creates uh, is still the uh, owner of the object. The more the object is being used, the more the profit will be 
and the more the uh, designer will sell uh, functional units that is the use of the product and therefore the economic interest of the operator and the general interest of society will converge. You don't need to have regulatory obligations because it will serve the interest of both. I'm not saying that it works in all instances, but it does work in some instances and it works pretty well in those instances. This is what the economy of functionality is all about. That's one aspect of the more general dematerialization strategy and the more general concept is that of circular economy. All this is pretty virtuous, but for some 20 years now, we've noticed that companies have uh, really relentlessly uh, developed a product with a planned obsolescence that would be perishable goods and that we need uh, to be uh, discarded and bought again by consumers. You're suggesting for a different model. So it's uh, several decades back in history. We buy high quality products and uh, try to keep them as long as we can. There's been a whole period of uh, disposable items for a long time and now we would switch to uh, sustainable goods. Do you think that a company can uh, switch from one model to the next just like that in a fortnight? No, it's very complex because it requires a huge capex. Do you think that companies are thinking about it? Well, more than that, there are many companies. I've just signed a research contract for a major French corporation, the idea being to use waste and to make it a secondary raw material in this uh, economy functionality. If this industry is going to work for another industry to sell refractory bricks, it's going to sell the service. I'll take another example. Let's consider an industry that sells a solution to clean up uh, fireplaces. It's going to produce the commodities that will allow for this cleaning. And the better the process is, the more the operator improves the process, the less money he will make because he will less, he sell less products. But if he sells the cleaning service, the more uh, he will be progressing on engineering on cleaning techniques, the better it will be for the environment and the, uh, the more money it will make. Now, for plant obsolescence, this is not uh, that common. There is a general obsolescence. The industry, industrialists want to sell. Let's consider two instances. One where the HP printer, which included an embedded software that would stop the printer after X number of copies. Samsung would sell a flat TV screen with a transformer which was close to a pivotal part. And after one or two years, the uh, transformer would break this famous part and the flat TV screen would no longer be usable. Instead of selling the flat screen or the printer, and if you sell a copying service or a flat screen service, you have no interest at all to rely on this type of uh, approach. We haven't so far disconnected the uh, economic vitality and the money generated from the project design and the use of the project with economy of functionality. And I insist once again, the uh, economic interest and the environmental interest will converge. A copying machine may last for a very long time. Now, to make it interesting, uh, we'll make sure that uh, the original machine will be upgraded sometimes and then change the cover so that the client will be very happy at the end of the day. But it is to the satisfaction of the client and to meet environmental requirements, and it makes the company even more profitable. That's what the economy functionality is all about. It has to be considered from this standpoint, but do not expect uh, panacea from that. Uh, when it comes to the environment, 
want to also have the rebound effect that needs to be considered. Let's imagine, for instance, people who have uh, their nice little house in a, in a nice urban area and they buy a heat pump. Once uh, the heat pump is amortized, this individual is going to make, to make uh, substantial savings. But uh, if they fly twice a year to the Bahamas, then it would have been much preferable to keep the same boiler instead of flying twice a year to the Bahamas Islands. No, you're talking about this industry that is going to sell services rather than the actual product. So it's a, a company that would uh, combine both goods and services. Well, the goods are uh, also the source of profit, uh, just like some middlemen, for instance. And are, in order to ensure their sales revenue and profit, these companies will have to turn into service providers, meaning that their employees also will have to be able to perform some maintenance work. No, uh, that's a lot of, there is a lot of inertia in people, and it would uh, mean uh, many changes to career development policies. I forgot to answer your previous question. I'm sorry. The first difficulty for a company to change from a standard model to a model of economic functionality, in the latter case, you need to invest huge amounts initially because you have to have enough uh, goods to uh, meet the needs uh, of a large population. And you have to pay for those even before any client has paid for the use of it. So no company can switch to an economy of functionality in a fortnight. So they do it uh, gradually, but they uh, would uh, have part of their business going to the economy of functionality because uh, they cannot switch all their production to economy of functionality. And the uh, financial community will also have to understand this and uh, fund these activities with a return on investment which would be much longer. Uh, there is no short payback, but uh, that's also an issue in terms of competition. There is also the way you can capture your customer base. If you, for instance, imagine that you no longer sell kilowatt hours as a utility, but you sell the HVAC service of a house or an apartment, the utility, it, the operator is going to invest in your equipment. And if you change the contract, the new arrangements will be uh, introduced. So you're not going to change the contract because it uh, will cause many problems. And if you uh, implement 100% of the economy of functionality, you no longer have a conventional market with uh, uh, objects that are present for potential buyers. It's uh, more flexible contracts, more individualized uh, systems. Now, if this were to take up, just like as we've heard earlier with collaborative economy, there would be um, a very uh, profound change. The concept has been there for ages. This idea has been invented by the industry. I think that the very first who uh, started this was Michelin for a very simple reason, which was allowing them to have a direct return on the use. Uh, they would have then, they would collect data on the wear and tear of their tires. So, so there was only a small segment of customers to whom they were selling a mileage. When did they do that? They did that in the 50s. And as from the 70s and 1980s, a certain number of industries have switched to this type of model. And some researchers have uh, uh, started to work on that, uh, namely the Swiss researcher uh, Walter Sahel. And they realized that it emerged as a new economic model to uh, reduce the impact on the environment, and that's how things uh, emerged. The initial purpose of the industrialists who were doing that was different, but then we realized that it could be duplicated and uh, it would serve an environmental purpose. It was not the concern of Rang Xerox in the beginning. It became one afterwards. Thank you, Mr. Borg.